If you wanna build a YouTube setup at home, but you have no idea where to start, today I'm gonna to be talking through all of my gear, through the cameras, the microphones, the lights, the tripods, and I'm gonna give you my top three tips if you're looking to set up a space for either YouTube or short form content creation. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. You might notice that my whole setup is self-contained. There are no wires running across the floor and both my camera, the audio recorder and my cell phone are plugged into a single battery, which is this small rig V-mount USB-C battery. Now we're gonna talk about that in just a bit and why that's important, but small rig is also the sponsor of today's video who provided those batteries and some of the gear throughout the space, but about half of it I purchased on my own because there are a lot of small little pieces that allow me just to connect all of this together. But let's start with what's actually in the space. Let's start with this lighting. So I'll get you to come around over here. This is my 200 watt light. It's the RC220B and I've got it at about 20%, which is a little bit brighter than I would normally just to light up the whole space for the demo, but the bigger the softbox, the more diffused the light is gonna be. Now, in my last video, I talked about using smaller lights, less expensive lights, one of those being the guy that you see over there. This light you saw in the intro video was giving me a little bit of an edge. This is a 60 watt light set to 5600 Kelvin, and the benefit of that is when you're dealing with a space and you want to separate yourself a little bit from the background, then it's giving me that edge light. So we'll, we'll flip back around and I'll show you what I mean. Kind of going all over the place here. So when I record like this with my key light there, my big main light, that guy is acting as an edge. Now, sometimes I'll swap that out for different lights, but right now that's giving me exactly what I need to create that separation. Now, if we go to the background, there's a few Wait, more. Hold on. Oh, come with me to the background. And actually we'll just do this. Over here, I have just a practical light. It's literally an Ikea light bulb. It's probably like 2700 Kelvin, but it creates some color and some warmth in the background. Now on this side, I do this a lot where I'll create like this color contrast. So on one side is the warm and on the other is the cool. This is another small rig product. It's literally just a little LED panel on a tripod, like nothing fancy. There is a lot going on with this setup. The first thing we have is the R6 with the 15 to 35. The 15 to 35 is nice because I can set it nice and wide. Like sometimes if you're shooting at 35 millimeters or 50 millimeters, depending on the space, it might be a little bit too tight. When possible, I'll zoom out, maybe not like 15 millimeters, but 18 millimeters, 20 millimeters to really give me that look that I want. Now, because I do both vertical and horizontal video, check this out, Let's see if I can do it. I have built this crazy contraption. Sorry, is the mic in the way? Let's move the mic, just do this. Okay, so this here is a crazy, I don't know if you wanna call it like L bracket, but essentially what it is, is it allows me to go from horizontal to vertical in a single click. If I release it, I come back here, now I'm locked in and I'm horizontal. It's this crazy contraption that's essentially built out of, like I built it out of rods and all these little slidey pieces. Cause a lot of the L brackets that you find online don't really work with the screen flip up. Like if I want to flip up my screen because I want to view myself in the monitor, sometimes it doesn't work and the L bracket gets in the way. So for me, this is kind of like the perfect contraption to solve all of those problems. The base for this whole rig is the Freeblazer tripod. It's Small Rig's like latest video tripod. Now it has this really cool feature. I'll link the short, but essentially it has this really quick extending option that you don't have to like fuss with a bunch of levers. There is a control right there so that, you know, if you want to get your video exactly where you need to. This is where we get into what powers it all. So this guy right here is it's like a USB-C power bank, but on steroids. It's what's known as a V-mount battery. This is the type of battery that you would connect to like a cinema rig or lights or something that requires a lot of power because this is 99 watts. And then it just clicks in and it has all these connectors. But the way I've got it set up, right on the top, I have two USB-C ports and a regular USB. So the one is going up into my camera so that I don't need to worry about batteries. It's always just gonna be off of this. I used to use this guy, which is the Rode VideoMic NTG. 
Still a great option, but not as good noise cancellation compared to the NTG3, which has more capsules. That is run down into this guy. Now I've talked about 32-bit audio before, 32-bit float audio, and the Zoom F3 provides 32-bit audio, and it provides the phantom power to the microphone so that everything is kind of being run into one location. So I've also got the USB-C into the small rig because that can provide the 99 watts I need to pr basically power everything all together. Now, I used to use the old small rig batteries. Actually, do I have one? Yeah. The old small rig batteries, you turn them on and the screen is small and you could only see so much information. But with the new ones, you know, it's telling me right on there. Hold on, it's, it's dusty. Let me, uh, hold on, it's dusty. We gotta, we gotta clean it. Because the screen is bigger and now in color, I can see that C1, 9.3 volts, C2, 20 volts, and then I have 84% battery life left. And then when that guy runs out, I have another one. So I don't have to swap my camera battery. I don't have to change the double A's inside of my audio recorder. I just hit the V mount, take that off, put that guy on, and now I have a fresh battery. Now, right now we're not running off of the shotgun mic because it would just be too crazy with all the running around that we're doing. But sometimes I do use a wireless mic, which is this guy right here, but I'll link that along with all the things that I'm talking about down in the description. I wanna talk about this really quick because this is also like a small rig contraption that I've made. It's essentially one of their super clamps with the airy locating pins on it so that it doesn't rotate. Again, I'll link all these little clamp pieces down in the description, but this clamp ties into a boom arm for like a microphone stand. You can see that I have full adjustability and then even on the end of it, I have this little small rig ball head and that way I can perfectly direct my audio and hang it out in front so that it's canceling everything to the side and only capturing the audio that I want it to capture. I've got this, I guess you could call it, it's another one of these clamps, these magic clamps. It locks right onto the tripod and then let's say I'm sitting down here. So let's, let's flip around and I'll set this back up. All right, we're flipped around to the side. This is how I would normally sit about this far away. Obviously I'd be facing that direction, but I wanna show you that because this is on a, like a magic clamp and a friction arm, I can literally bring my notes all the way up right next to my lens. Here are all my notes for this video. And then that way they're right beside the lens. So I don't have to like look down or look at a computer screen. Sometimes I do, like if we flip this back around. So in this configuration, I could have my phone, but if I need something that's a little bit bigger, sometimes I run the monitor off to the side. So that's a little bit easier to read. All that's fun and all that's great. All of that is great. All of that gear is fun and great, but what about actually setting up your space? Well, there are a few things that I've done to take advantage of this space that are common mistakes that I've seen a lot of other people make. So right now, my room in this direction is, I wanna say 18 feet. In this direction, it's maximum 10 feet. So an okay space, kind of like a studio spare bedroom. Now I'm shooting in the long direction, which is allowing me to create depth versus if I was just flat up against the wall, there's no separation between me and the background. It kind of just looks flat and boring and I don't have any way to add an edge light or add things behind me. In order to get the most space, this is the view that you typically see where I'm not even shooting in the long direction, I'm actually shooting in the diagonal direction, which gives me the most depth and the most separation from my background. The other thing is that I turned off all the lights in my space. I've got this, but again, that's just a practical light that's creating a little bit of warmth in the background. And then you need to think about your light placement. This is the lighting setup that I normally try to have, where the light is 45 degrees off to one side and just slightly elevated above my eye line. The reason for that is it's gonna give me that Rembrandt or that loop style of lighting. And then when I go to hit record on my main camera, now I have this nice clean lighting. I'm not too overexposed. I'm not too underexposed. And I have a little bit, little, little bit of dimensionality to my face. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. For me, having everything in one stand is just so much better because I don't have to worry about finding all these little pieces. I don't have to go to one side of my room to plug a light in or the other side of my room to find the power source for my camera. I can literally just take this, move it to one corner of my room or move it to another corner of my room and I'm pretty much ready to go. So if you like this video, let me know down in the comments. If you wanna see more setups, more behind the scenes, I think this is the first time I've done this on the channel, so let me know. 
Until the next one, go shoot photos.